guys, um, so it's Monday night, President's Day. I hope everybody had a good President's Day. Um, I haven't been on for a while, and I don't know, probably won't be on for the rest of this week. I, I don't know, it just depends on how I'm feeling. Um, I'll talk to y'all about that in a minute. But my daughter... My oldest daughter came over with the grandbaby today, and she took me out, and I went over to Dollar Tree, and I gotta show you guys what I got. Okay, so, um, I didn't film, because she was in the car with me, and, uh, hold on. Okay, sorry. Um, Grandbaby was at home. We were just doing a quick... We weren't even planning on going that way. So, um, this is the Dollar Tree haul. And there was a whole crap ton more in there. Um, I'm not sure. I kind of want to go back, but at the same time, I don't. I'm just not feeling it. So, there's two here. They're kind of stuck together. This one on the inside's got cracked there and the handle's broke, but... So, two pitchers, um, a bent spoon, but you know what? I could use that. <laughs> I don't care. Free is free, right? Um, a bowl. It's got a crack in it right here, but, you know, makeup, Halloween candy. I can put stuff in here to store. I got this, um, one pillowcase, so I'll wash that. Um, I got this Fuzzy Friends. Pillow. I don't know how this works, y'all. Like, I guess you're supposed to be able to push it one way and then push it another. Oh, like that, I guess. Anyway, it needs to get sewn up here and it needs to get washed because something spilled on it. But I can sew it and then I'll wash it. And then I got a grab box and then I grabbed the f these few things and a couple things and threw them in this little box. Let me get this. Hold on. Let me show you what we've got going here. God. Okay. I, I just... Okay, so I grabbed... Oh, Jesus. My grandson's toy started talking. It scared me. So I grabbed this box, and it's got cards in it and stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm thinking, well, Valentine. Today's the 17th. So it's got to be Valentine's Day stuff, right? Y'all... The same Dollar Tree I got all them freaking Christmas cards at. I got more Christmas cards. Like, this box was full of Christmas cards. Christmas cards. Christmas cards. Uh, Christmas bag. Uh, Christmas cookies sealed. My grandson just ripped them out of their main package. But see, they're still sealed in this one. Um... I got, okay, so I got this. See, it's cracked right here, but, I mean, it's only cracked near the top. And you could put fake flowers in it and put the crack near the back, you know? Got a Gatorade, but my daughter drank it. So, literally, got a box of Christmas on February 17th with a little bit of, got these miniatures. And then this box... I mean, these, all these Christmas cards, all the Christmas cards were in this box. So, to show you how we're going to do here. So, I'm going to just go ahead and fill up this box again with all the Christmas cards. So, the only thing that's in here that's not, thanks for scaring me, that's not Christmas is this, well, no, that's not cards, is that, the cookie, and the bags. But the rest of the stuff is cards, okay? And these are all Christmas cards. I mean, check it out, y'all. Like, you know, I have, like, huge bags. Huge bags full of these people's Christmas cards from this store. And yet, here we go. I've got February 17th. I got more Christmas. I'm telling you, I could open up a card shop. A Christmas card shop. Look at that. We love it Christmas. And these ones, I mean, I can't even... 
Like, they're in plastic, y'all. Each one of these is individually wrapped in plastic. More Christmas cards. And here I am thinking, oh, okay, well, it's, it's the 17th, so I'm going to hit Valentine's Day cards. So I grabbed this box, and I thought it was all Christmas cards, or I thought it was all Valentine's Day cards. And legit, it's all Christmas cards, y'all. And the Valentine's Day cards are in the dumpster. I wasn't able to grab them all because, oh, there's a Christmas card. Because my daughter was like, we gotta go, because she's freaking out. But this is the Valentine's Day cards that I got. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot of Valentine's Day cards in here. But, you know, for, oh, that's Christmas. Like, for reals, y'all. So, I got like one, two, three, that's cute, three, four, five, six, ooh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I got like 25 cards. 25 Valentine's Day cards. The rest of my cards that I got today were Christmas. Isn't that cute? Isn't that cute? Yeah, that's for trouble. Take your trouble. Here's your Valentine's Day card. It's late. I know. I'm sorry. But my husband's not in town, y'all. Um, like, so totally excuse the sticking up hair. Grandson was here today. I'm telling you. Woo he was. He was something today. I'm telling you. I don't know what his mama gave him or what, but. <sighs> All right. Anyway. <sighs> Give me a second. All right. Um, one of the reasons why you guys haven't seen me, and I do try to keep, like, real with y'all, because, I mean, that's just who I am. Um, I don't want to screw around. I am who I am. If you like me, great. If you don't, well, I'm sorry. But I wish you would. But I can live without you absolutely loving me, liking me. Um, but um, the reason why y'all have not seen me lately, and trouble's over here beside me, I <laughs> think. Okay, he popped up behind the futon, but I think between the fact that he knows that I'm filming and just getting the camera out to film right now and what it's doing to me, he's now currently by my side. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. So, I don't know if any of you are friends with me on Facebook or have seen my Facebook page. Um, I did a huge rant. Was it Friday? I think was the last day that I was actually on here, too. Um, so I got finished with my diving stuff on Friday with you guys. And I came home to deal with the whole insurance issue, medical insurance issue. Um, I don't... Um, so my husband's job... They were very adamant that, you know, me and Allie weren't allowed, me and our daughter Allie weren't allowed on our, on his health insurance. Um, so, and the fact that he's hardly ever home, um, he's home maybe once every couple of months or once a month or, I mean, very rare, very rare, like once every, I don't know, whatever. But because of how little he's here at the house, um, the state of Texas went ahead and said that be he's not technically considered a resident, so his income doesn't, um, matter as far as getting qualifications for state benefits, okay? 
And, you know, my daughter works at Chipotle. And as you all know, I have a very... Ah! No, sir! Sorry, guys. He's trying to get some treats. And in doing so, he wants to knock everything down off my bedside table. Because that's where he knows his treats are. Um... Sorry, trouble jumped up here, knocked the phone out of my hand, and it stopped recording. <clears throat> so what I was saying is, most of you know, if you've been on the channel or if you've watched my previous videos, um, I have a very, very, um, I want to say rare form of heart disease, um, of, of heart failure. Um, by the time the symptoms of this disease arrive... Um, to the point that people are really pushing their doctors to go see a cardiologist and yada, yada, yada. The, per the, the person with this disease actually has less than two years to live. Um, that disease mixed with hypertension is just not good. Um, I have never had high blood pressure, which is really kind of interesting um, my blood pressure's always been very good. I mean, it's been on the higher end of it, but he's, it's never been what they don't consider normal. It's just a higher end normal, like, oh my gosh, you need to be concerned that you might end up with high blood pressure one day. And I still, to this day, have never really had high blood pressure. Um, but what happened was, about two, two years ago, two, three years ago, um... I started noticing, um, I guess the technical term is palpitations, but it felt like my heart was trying to leap out of my chest and it was racing and it wasn't just like, whoop, okay, whoop. It was like, boop, 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 boop. Like it was literally trying to, like, you just got the crap scared out of you kind of leaping out of your chest. And it was, you know, and okay, I get it if, like, I was running, if I got scared, if I was watching a scary movie, that kind of thing I understood. But this was like, I could be just laying down in bed, asleep, and I would wake up to this feeling. Um, I could be laying down in bed, just relaxing, watching Heart of Dixie or... Um, what else did I watch? What else do I watch? That's, I watch a lot of like ones that are non thinkers, non scary, non. I'm not a. I, I'm not a person who likes scary by any means. Um, my husband wants to watch a scary movie. Dude, you do it in the other room, and I don't want to hear it. <laughs> type scary things. Um, I I don't mind Halloween, but I won't go to a haunted house. And I think that all stems from years ago when I was like. 18, I actually had a Freddy Krueger jump out at me at a haunted house, and his nails, which were supposed to be rubber, well, this guy thought, oh, I'm just going to be a smart butt and not wear the rubber ones and real, wear real ones, and I got taken to the hospital with a huge ass gash in my leg, sorry, with a huge gash in my leg, bleeding. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I'm not scary, but anyway, but that's what it felt like. I'd be calm, everything would be fine, nothing scary going on, and all of a sudden, it's like, I just had the biggest scare of my life, and I'm running, and, and it's not just that I got scared, but I'm scared, and I'm running for my life, and it would go on for about two minutes, and then it would stop, okay, so about three years ago, I brought this up to my doctor, my primary care doctor, he said, well, let's put you in on a harness, so that I had to wear a heart monitor, for 48 hours and let's see what happens. And I did and he caught it maybe once or twice but he said ah you know it could have been anything. You could have been you could have been straining yourself and not realized it. You could have, you know, pushed your you, it could have been anything. No big deal. But the one thing I've always learned and and this is probably because my grandmother was a nurse is that if you feel if you personally feel like for yourself or for your child who cannot speak for themselves. Okay, so like for my grandson. If you truly believe that there is something going on. Don't just let the doctor go, oh, we're going to do this. Oh, it's nothing to worry about. 
If you think it's that serious, guys, push. Push the doctor. Keep pressing that doctor. Because that's what I did. And, yeah, sometimes it's overactive imagination and sometimes it's nothing. But, for example, in my case, it turned out to be this very rare form of heart failure. They did a bunch of tests, not tests that were too intrusive. But even with the non-intrusive tests, they started seeing sim the beginnings of, I mean, and it's the, the inf infancy. We're at the very infancy of this heart disease, okay, of this heart failure. So, as my cardiologist said, it's rare if ever anyone's ever caught this disease this early. They know how the d disease progresses, and it's hereditary thing, but they can't catch it early. They can't catch it before you got two years left to live. Now, because I caught it, because I kept pushing and pushing and pushing, saying something is not right, y'all. Some is not right. We found this disease so early that, of course, you cannot stop it and you cannot reverse it. But with medication, we can actually monitor it and slow it down. The hell is he playing? Oh, he's playing with one of his toys. Sorry, Trouble's like over there dancing. Um, so we've actually been able to do medications to slow it down. Now, because of this, with the degenerative bone disease, the degenerative muscle disease, the two um, herniated discs, bulging bulging herniated discs, the arthritis, the every the array of everything else that's going on with me. And I'm 41 years old and my body's shutting down and I feel like I should be like a 90-year-old. And even my doctor said, with my health conditions, a 90-year-old would be depressed. So I have antidepressants and I see a therapist and um, I have anxiety issues due to it. So I'm on an anti-anxiety med. Um, and what happened is, anyway, I'm out of three of my medications. I'm, I'm completely out of my antidepressant, completely out of my anti-anxiety. And one of my heart pills is completely gone. So I'm down from seven pills a day that I'm supposed to be taking to four of those pills. And I'm about to run out of another one of those. My husband gets paid this Friday, so hopefully by this Friday I'll be able to get the medications because they are ready. But the thing is, is that the state health insurance said, okay, well, we're not going to go ahead and count your husband's income because, well, he's technically not living with you. Technically. But they counted my daughter's income as household income. And we, <clears throat> because of that, she makes $50. Above what the limit is for her and I to get health insurance through the state. But this is what, this is what killed me. Because this woman, and I felt bad for this woman because I was explaining all this to her. And she felt horrible. She put me on hold. She talked to multiple supervisors trying to figure out a way to get me my um, insurance so that I could get my medications. Because my medications without insurance are... I mean, just the three of them that are ready right now are over $200 <clears throat> without insurance. But she couldn't get any. I mean, she had to follow the, the, the policies and procedures set forth by the state of Texas and the government and blah, blah, blah. And I went on a huge rant the other night on Facebook about it. But what kills me is... Hold on. Let me get something to drink. You go. My Diet Coke. Um, um, sorry, what kills me about all of this is one, my daughter makes $50 more than what she's supposed to, even though the state of Texas for three years now, they have been taking care of all of my medical expenses. Okay. But that's all I've wanted. Food benefits, cash benefits. I'm like, you know what? There are people in this world that could, families, 
and 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 you know elderly there are other people in this world that yes i pay yes i'm excuse me paycheck to paycheck and yes we struggle quite often and we have to rob peter to pay paul this month and or this paycheck and i have to do a lot of dollar um you know cheap stuff for dinner and dollar tree dinner stuff and um you know all of that to me it's fine i mean it's not ideal but it is fine but this poor woman she gets back on the phone with me and advises me that her supervisor said that we make way more than what's allowed for the cash benefits which okay fine got that no problem i wasn't asking for cash benefits anyway don't need them we got cash coming in not a lot but i got a roof over my head i got a vehicle that i that yeah i struggled to put gas in but i still get gas in it i you know um we don't qualify because of my daughter's income we are $50 over the qualifying amount for medical insurance. It's the only thing I asked for. The only thing I needed. Only thing I asked for. However, we do qualify for food stamps. And she asked me if I'd like to apply for food stamps. Y'all... I sat on this phone with this woman, and I know, like I told her, I said, look, I, I get you're doing your job, and it's not you, it's the higher-ups, it's the government officials, it's the, well, this government is supposed to be by the people, for the people. How can a government say that when you're denying somebody a necessity that you know they need in order to live? So I told her, I, you know, and I told her, I said, I know it's not you and I'm not going to get angry with you. And I'm, I'm really doing my best lately not to get angry, not to get stressed because I know without the specific, you know, I know without my medications that I'm missing, um, we're looking at life and death. I mean, let's, let's, let's get real. Let's get honest, guys. This is a life and death situation. And without these medications that are in the pharmacy ready for me to be picked up, without those medications, I'm feeling the effects. I have time where I'm okay. Like right now, I'm feeling okay. But right before I picked up my phone, I couldn't keep my eyes open. I was, my daughter came over this morning just to check on me, brought the grandbaby, um, you know, she got here and she's like, mom, get up. And I was just like, I was dragging butt, you know, and, and okay. So everybody drags butt in the morning sometimes, right? Well, my daughter actually took a healthcare course, a health class. So she was able to check my, my, uh, you know, check to see what's going on with my heart. Like just to check the rate, my heart rate, it was barely registering. Like, you, she could barely feel my heart beating. I mean, we knew we were, we knew I was alive. I was up moving around. But that's how bad it is. And then there's moments where my heart's beating fine and I feel fine. And then there are moments where my heart feels like it's ready to come out of my chest again. Stuff that I had under control. I no longer have under control because I no longer have the medication I need. And I think it sucks. I I, I, there are people in this world that are drug addicts, drug abusers, that are, um, they make so much money, but they hide it. And I don't, y'all, I really don't. I made, I think I've made $300 in a year with the few things that I've stolen. Not stolen. <laughs> with the few things I've sold. That I've found dumpster diving. Maybe a year. In a year's time I made like 300 bucks so. Um. But y'all. This is. I mean. There are people. And I. But see that's the other thing too. She asked me what I make. Now I've been fighting with disability. 
and I will continue to fight with disability till I get disability because I am at that point where I am disabled. I can't do anything. Um, because of my heart condition and all my other conditions, I, I can't function at a normal job, right? So, um, you know, but, but there, but, but then she asks me my income level and I don't lie. Oh, in the past year I made $300 selling stuff I found. I wrote a note up, signed it, dated it, told her that. Well, because I was honest about the money that I make that's not W-2'd or on the books. It's stuff that I've just found dumpster diving and sold. Um, between that amount plus what my daughter makes at her job. Oh, we're $50. I mean, if I had lied and said, oh, instead of making 300 I said, oh, I made five, five dollars this year. Well, then I might actually be able to get my benefits. But there are people out there hiding money from the government. They own their own houses. And yet somehow, they're in a house that they own. And they're getting cash benefits and medical benefits and food stamp benefits. And and they're still able to pay their $2,000 mortgage. And their $400 a month light bill. And, you know, $2,000 a month mortgage. And... They've got brand new cars that they bought off the lot, never been used. Dude, my cars are either used or hand-me-downs. All my cars have, like, well over 100,000 miles on them when I get them. And that's fine. You know, beggars can't be choosers and all, but I'm appreciative for the things I've got in life. But what I don't get is why does it... I feel so defeated. We were a country that was raised that we were a country that was built on the foundation that this is by the people, for the people, about the people. And I'm sitting here looking at this going, oh, so the people that we elected to be our voices have now officially signed a death certificate for me. Because as soon as I run out of my other medications that I have, I'm done. I got to pay cash. And let me tell you, the three prescriptions, the three that I have sitting over there right now that I need to pick up, those are $200. And from my understanding, those are the cheapest three of all of my medications. And that is with a discount card. A discount card. Y'all, I turned down the food stamps. I'm sorry, but you know what? My child can, my child eats just fine. I eat just fine. I have food. She gets free lunches. She gets free meals at her work. She earns money. I don't take her money for my bills. I really don't. So all of her, almost all, well, I'm sorry. She, she, she gives us $200 a month. To kind of help her understand the idea of paying a rent or paying a bill. I don't pay for her phone bill. I don't pay for any, I mean, I, I deal with her medications, her doctor's appointments, food in the house. And I, I'm, I'm not saying that she, I don't get her food. I do. I get her grapes. Um, she loves pineapple. I get her fruity pebbles for like Saturday and Sunday mornings. Um... You know, I've got, I get hamburger meat, and we, you know, hamburger, well, I would say hamburgers, but not really, we don't eat hamburgers that much, but, you know, I make meatloaf and stuff like that. But the point is, is I fix my budget every other week that I've got coming in so that she doesn't have to pay extra on anything. She understands the responsibility of taking care of her bills, but she's also able to save her money to do whatever the heck she wants with it. So, because I don't feel that that's appropriate for me to just, oh, well, hey, um, give me all your money. She's working hard for it. She deserves it. She gives me $100 every two weeks, and that's what she, basically what she pays in rent. And for the electricity, all her other bills, her phone bill, everything like that, she pays for herself. She pays for all of her graduation stuff because she's a senior in high school this year. So she's paying for all of that. 
Now, we've talked about it and stuff like that. She paid for her high school. They're not doing rings now. They can do necklaces. So, she paid for her high school necklace. She's paid for her cap and gown. She's paying for her um, invitations to graduation. She's paying for her photo shoot this coming up weekend. But, see, at the same time, it's not that I'm forcing her to pay for all those things. She wants those things. And so, she knows that she's made the money to do those things. And... She's very independent on that. She likes to be an adult on that type of thing. But there are some things that she needs. Basic necessities. Roof over her head. Electricity. Some food in the fridge. Um, oh, a big one. Health insurance and medication. Because she has severe anxiety issues. And even though she's not having sex, she has birth control. But that's a hormone thing. But she's got to have those two prescriptions. Nothing I can do. But her prescriptions are like 30 bucks. So I will get her prescriptions when I have the money. And she's, she's fine with that. You know. She's dealing with that. But her prescriptions at the same time. They're not life or death. My prescriptions. I'm not taking them. I'm starting to have issues with my heart again. I can't call my cardiologist and say, hey, can you see me? This is what's going on. Because I can't afford to see him because I've got no health insurance. But I qualify for food stamps. But I don't want food stamps. I'm not, I don't want to take that benefit away from someone who's Living in their car with their kid and their kid starving. And don't tell me it doesn't happen because we all know it does. But you know what I mean? So why is our government basically giving me the big middle finger and telling me, meh, just you know what? Over there, there's a ditch. Just drive your car right beside it. Open your door. Get out. Go lay down and die. Then that way we don't have to deal with none of you. We don't have to deal with nothing to do. Nobody has to deal with you no more. I mean, that's how it feels. It feels like this government that was set up for the people, by the people, who elect officials to be the voice of the people, they're basically saying, well, you know what, if you got a big heart condition... And it's a life and death matter. And you need health insurance. And, well, you make 50 bucks more than our... So, basically, you make... With your kid's income, a thousand bucks a month. Which is basically what we live off of. It's a thousand bucks a month. Oh, sorry. You don't qualify for cash. You don't qualify for the medical because you make too much. Fifty dollars too much. But, hey, you want some food stamps? If somebody could explain that to me, and and today's President's Day, y'all, and, and and our government was set up with these presidents that are supposed to be, and I'm sorry, but 40 years of looking over my life, and all I can say is, why the hell does the government keep screwing its own people? Like, Seriously. Someone explain that to me. I'm not a politician. I could never be a politician, especially not with my heart, because the stress would kill me. But you know, it's it's it is what it is. Anyway, so that was the long rant, and I apologize. But that is why until Friday, y'all may not see me all that much this week, and I probably will not be doing a whole lot of diving because. I'm trying very hard to stay calm, to rest, to not overexert myself, to not overstress myself, because even though I can physically feel what not having my medication is doing to me, and it is, <laughs> it's bad, y'all, it is bad, um, Sorry, trying not to go there. <clears throat> trying not 
Try not to go there. My hands are so swollen, I had to take my rings off, and I almost had to go to the hospital and have them cut it, cut, cut my rings off of me. Which is a side effect of my heart disease. Um, okay, trying not to cry. I have found that when you hold in your emotion, it's not healthy. But it's also not healthy breaking down while talking to y'all because y'all won't be able to understand me. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I actually have been crying for days. And it's not, it's not something I'm able to control. It's the meds, you know, it's like first I ran out of my anti-anxiety medication. And I was off that for a few days and then all of a sudden my antidepressant went away. And so I've been off that for a few days more. And then when my heart medication went away. And now it's a couple of days later and, oh, I've had a hysterectomy, so I have to have, and because of my heart condition, I can't take est estrogen pills or hormone pills. I have to have a hormone patch and I'm out of patches. Well, no, I'm, I take that back. I've got like one patch left, but I'm pushing it. I should have put that, I should have, I should be out completely out of patches, but I do have one patch left, so... But it's like all this is building up. So as the medication's leaving my body. As the medication's starting to leave my body slowly more and more and more. I, it's the depression, the anxiety. It's becoming overwhelming. Um, not, not when I say depression, I mean just like crying. What I'm trying not to do right now. Um, just, dealing with emotion. Um, I'm not, I promise I'm not suicidal. Um, I keep, I've learned to keep myself, no matter what my situation is, to think positive. At least I've got a roof over my head. I'm not sleeping in my car or in a gutter. Um, at least I've got food that I can eat. It may not be the best food, but it's food, you know. Um, you know, I, I try to think positive, and I try to stay positive. But it's a chemical, it's a, it's a chemical thing more than anything that's going on with me. Then on top of that, I've got the heart, and I can feel all of my heart issues coming out again. Yeah. <sighs> But I'm staying positive, and I'm not suicidal. I guarantee you, I'm not suicidal, or in that type of a depression, or that type of a. I mean, there was a point. There were there have been a few points where I'm like, you know what? I just want to pull the covers up over my head, and be left alone, for a few hours. But, you know, that's about it. Just um. Um. Sorry. Of course, it probably doesn't help that dumb me decides to go ahead and watch Ellen on YouTube and on TV. And I've watched Ellen DeGeneres since she was back on the sitcom when she first came. I was watching her when she came out. But I'm telling you, you know, she does such good in this world. So that only just, I'm just laying here crying. My daughter's like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm just watching Ellen. Oh my God, I can't believe she just did that. You know, that kind of thing. But, um... So, yeah, but, you know, I, I, I just, I just, I, I don't, I don't understand the world today, you know? I think one of the things I love watching about Ellen is that, you know, there, she brings a positive light to things that are positive. I don't watch the news. To me, there's too much negativity in the news, you know, um... I try to keep myself positive. I'm, I'm going through hell right now. But my husband gets paid on on Friday. And on Friday when he gets paid. Again we're going to have to rob Peter to pay Paul basically. So I'm going to have to deduct some money off of one of our bills that we're planning on paying. So that I can go get my medications. But my husband's very adamant that that's. There's no choice in the matter. Because he knows me. 
He knows me well enough to know that if I have to short our rent by $200 for my medication or pay all of that money on the rent, I'll pay all that money on the rent. I put myself, I try to, I, I tend to put myself last on the list, um, but he's very adamant that, oh, okay, well, you know, we do owe, because <laughs> on the 25th, we have to go to court for eviction, which, you know, is not unusual. Every month, we pretty much go to court for eviction, but we always find a way to pay enough to stay and get the eviction vacated. Um, and it sucks, and honestly, that 200 bucks that I need to use for my my medicine on Friday, I really don't want to use it for my medicine. I want to use it for the rent, but you got to do what you got to do, and it's kind of like one of those things, well, you know, I got to do what I got to do, and my husband's put his foot down, and my daughter's put her foot down, both of them. Um, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I have to pay $200 for medication on Friday, and I will. And when I do, I'll probably, you know, take another couple of days to let the medicine really get back into my system. And then I'll be able to get going out more. Um, just doing this one little dive today, I left so much stuff in the dumpster. Like, for real, y'all, I am pissed off with myself because I left so much behind. I wish I could, I wish I had filmed, I wish I would shown you how much I left behind, but it's just... By the time I got those two boxes, it was like, I was ready to drop. Like, legit ready to drop. So, yeah. Um, so, that that's kind of where I'm sitting. And I know this is kind of a ranty, talking, non-dumpster divey type video. And, um, sorry for that. But I did kind of want to check in with y'all, um, for those of you who are our viewers, or, well, are, when I say are, I mean me and Trouble's viewers, wanted to check in with you guys, let you kind of know what goes on, what's going on. Um, this spot right, let's see, this spot right here is where Trouble's been sleeping every night. Um, of course he's not here now because he's being a butt running around, but when Trouble feels it's important to sleep next to me like he's been doing for the last, I don't know, three or four nights. Um, it's usually because there's a, there's a serious issue of some sort, you know. Um, he is a great cat, cute and adorable and lovable, but when I tell y'all he's a service cat, he's a service cat. His job is to keep me calm and keep, and if he senses, like when he senses my heart, like I've noticed when, when I'm, can feel my heart racing and he's laying next to me he'll get up he'll stand up he'll come over and he'll start batting my arm and and kissing on me like hey you know it's okay I'm right here calm down because he thinks I'm upset because to any animal that's what the sense would be is that somebody's upset but it's not it's just it's just the heart condition itself so um it will kill me one day but I'm gonna stay positive and say that it's gonna be another 90 years, let's say, um, but I did, you know, y'all are, um, our family, part of our family, since we do YouTube, um, and I just kind of wanted to let y'all know kind of what's going on, um, I do have some gift cards here, um, probably gonna go through them tomorrow and do a gift card video, um, of course, I don't have a computer, so we're going to have to do it like I've done the last few gift card videos where I check them and then let you know if I find something, which really stings. But um, if I'm not able to do it tomorrow, I will try and do it sometime this week, possibly before Friday. Um, it really, truly depends 100% on how I feel each day. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's where we're sitting at. Um you know, if somebody could explain to me why our government is so screwed up. They help people who don't need it or who are too busy screwing their lives up with drugs. But they won't help the people that are really in need. And, 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 and I don't qualify for cash. Fine, I don't care. I qualify for food stamps. 
$600. She said I qualify for $600 a month in food stamps. Y'all. Yes, that $600 a month in food stamps would come in handy. But. <clears throat> I've been on food stamps before. My family has. We've had cash help before. And of course the medical help. But. I, I don't. When I don't need the benefits anymore because I don't need them anymore, well, then I let them go because, honest to God, there's there are people out there in this world a hell of a lot worse off than I am. A hell of a lot worse off that need those benefits more. And yes, there are people out there in this world that health problems are a hell of a lot worse than mine are. And they need those benefits too. But honest to God, I kind of think they get them. And if they don't, oh, excuse me, if they don't, and that's not an assumption of mine, I apologize. I'm just in a situation in life where I'm very flustered, very frustrated. Um, I don't find it a sign of weakness to ask for help when needing help. Um, I think that makes, I, I think if somebody can ask for help when they need help, that makes them stronger. Um, but all I want help with is the one thing I can't afford, which is my medical. Um, my husband did talk to his employer and let them know what's going on. Now his employer is in the healthcare industry. And because his employer is in the, in the healthcare industry, um, they're not a healthcare insurance company. They are not. Um, they do have healthcare insurance, but mostly for just their employees. However, um, after my husband explained the situation to them on Friday, I sent them copies of the form saying that as of the 31st of January, my daughter and I were no longer insured by medical med medical insurance. And his company said that they're going to go ahead and review that documentation, put it in the records, and they'll put us on the medical plan. However, we don't know how quickly or how slowly that process takes. So, I mean, I could have health insurance tomorrow, but I'd still have to pay a deductible or a copay on the medicine and... I won't have it till Friday anyway, so, but, you know, so there, I mean, there is an option, and, and, and his company's been very good about this, but his company has also been made very well aware of my health conditions, and I said that that is the only reason why they are willing to do this, is because they'll, they're willing to put our daughter on, because they don't feel that it's appropriate for everyone but the child to be covered by health insurance. They think the child needs health insurance as well. If everyone, if they're going to cover, basically there's only three of us in the household, me, my husband, and our daughter, because my other daughter's married and living with her husband and, and got insurance through their stuff. But, um, you know, they said, so if they're, um, if they're saying that they're going to insure me with, even, even though the only reason why they're willing to insure me is because of all of my health issues. Um, and how serious they are. And because these people are in the healthcare industry, um, you know, they have an oncology and a radiology and, uh, they have these different departments. They deal with heart patients. They've been, um, I was able to send them some documentation from my doctor with the exact verbiage of my conditions, the, the technical verbiage that I just. I don't think anyone understands that except for doctors themselves. And they've said that this is so serious that they're going to go ahead and work to put me on his insurance. But again, we don't know when that's going to be. But, you know, my, my big thing is, is, is just it sucks that our government can be so cold. I mean, this, the government, the, 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 the insurance, the state insurance, they... They've been paying for three years 
for all of these tests. And now I have found genetics. Um, long story, but I've recently found my biological father's side of the family. And there's heart conditions all over on that side of the family. So there are more tests that my doctor is wanting to start doing to get more in-depth into making sure that some of these other conditions aren't affecting me as well because God forbid I need more than hypertension and a very rare form of heart failure. But, you know, there's testing and stuff, stuff that I'm just not going to be able to pay for, not without insurance. But, you know, the thing is, is how can, how can your government and how can an insurance company, and, you know, it's not even so much the insurance company, it's the government. How can the government spend all this time and acknowledge the fact that they are paying for tests, that they're getting doctor's report after doctor, doctor's report about all these serious life and death health situations and all the serious life and death needs of medication. And for three years, they've been paying for it all. For three years, they've been helping out paying for it all. And all of a sudden, they say, uh, meh, we don't care no more. Whatever. It's just, it sucks that this government can do that to somebody, to anybody, let alone, you know, sucks that it's to me, but, it, you know, if they're doing it to me, they're doing it to somebody else. And so, yeah. Anyway, that's my rant. That's kind of what's going on. Trouble's done, run away. He's playing again because he knows where it's about bedtime because mom's about out of it. Um, So I'm going to go ahead and edit this video real quick. Lay down. I'm going to pass out. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get out and do maybe some diving this week before my meds. Um, definitely hoping I can get at least to the gift cards to do something. Um, but yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. Um, thank you for being part of our YouTube family. Um, you know, what you see is what you get. And I appreciate every single one of you. Um, let's don't forget to, it's kind of hard, but don't forget to like this video. I know it's kind of hard because it's kind of on a downer note. Um, don't forget to share this video because I feel like it's important that my message get out there. Maybe the right person will hear it and things will start changing for our government and not only myself, but other people that are in my situation or similar situation or situation is worse. will be able to, um, you know, our government will be able to start. Maybe the right person will hear me, you know, I, you don't know. So share the video, definitely share the video. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, uh, turn your notifications on once you subscribe. Um, I promise I'm going to try and get a lot more upbeat, a lot more happier guys. Um, try and get this ball going and <sighs> jump over this hurdle in life and just keep on trucking. Um, but yeah, so get your friends and family to subscribe. Probably not based off of this video, but maybe one of my other ones. Um, I have no clue where, I'm like looking, I'm radically looking for trouble. I have no clue where he ran off to. Um, but, you know, he's got to do him because he can't be up my butt 24-7, even though he is my service animal. But he will be with me all night, like I said, I showed you, right there on the bed next to me. Um, so he did at least pop in and say hi at the very beginning of this video. So, um, yeah, so like, share, subscribe. Turn your notifications on. Get your friends and family to subscribe. Let's get to 50 subscribers, y'all. At least that. So we can have a fun contest. Because it'll be a blast. Um, we can do mystery box or the winners. I, I guess the winners can look at it this way. We can do one of two things. The winners can either get a mystery box kind of tailored toward them. Or we can do some type of a gift card giveaway. All right? Um... But when we get closer to 50, we can discuss it. Like, when we're at, like, 45, let's discuss it more then. But let's get more subscribers so we can get this, um, this, uh, contest going, y'all. All right? And, um, Trouble and I will be around, and we will see you guys on the flip side of everything. Y'all, if you're out there driving, or if you're out there diving, drive safe and dive safe. Okay? And, um, give the people you love a big hug. Tell them you love them. It's important. Okay? 
And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys later.